I was just getting ready to take out that little orange kayak and uh, I was uh, sort of struggling, it's really, really wobbly. I'd found it in, a, in some trees just over there. And the next door neighbor said, well, that looks wobbly. Have you tried a fishing kayak? I said, well, I don't have a fishing kayak. And he said, I've got one, would you like to borrow it? And so this is what I have to go out in now. What do we think about that? Now this fishing kayak has the virtue of being really stable. It's got like three sort of hull affairs. It's a bit like a trimaran. It has a seat. It also has a stand-up position so you can stand up paddleboard it. So I think this will be much better for my videos than uh, the little wobbly canoe. So let's get out on the lake and see what it's like. Well, I'm out here on the uh, the fishing kayak. It looks actually quite good, and it feels a lot more stable. And so, uh, it's a bit easier to do a, a bit of a conversation in a way. So, what I want to talk about today is this. I'm focusing a little bit more on depression, and I want to consider this question: When you're depressed, does it feel like you're being punished? Many people would say that depression feels like punishment. And, of course, punishment has a really interesting and long, long history in social development and in the legal system. And in fact, about, oh, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, the idea of punishment and reward was the kind of the core concept in psychology. It's called behaviorism. But here's the idea. A child's behavior, a child's experience, and therefore every adult's experience, is shaped, it's formed by reinforcement and punishment. Well, by reward and punishment in a sense, and that the whole process is called reinforcement. So, the child inadvertently runs out into the, the street and they don't stop when there's traffic, let's say, when they don't get hurt or anything, but you're angry with the child. That's an internal, your anger is an internal experience because you're just imagining how terrible things could be. But for the child, the anger is a, a punishing experience because they're, they're angry and children are programmed to want to be uh, accepted, let's say. So that's a punishment experience. And so the net result is the child is likely to do that less. They're less likely to run out into the road. So punishment makes things happen less often and reward makes things happen more often. So if the child does something and that's a good thing, you say, oh, well done. The child recognizes that as a reward and is likely to do that thing more often. So this punishment and reward, it runs through everything that human beings do. It, it just, it, it shapes, as one thinks a better word really, it shapes our upbringing and it makes us who we are. A good upbringing, therefore, is the correct balance or a good balance of punishment and reward. So I would say nobody has a perfect upbringing. I mean, I can't say that, I suppose, because there might be someone in the world who has a perfect upbringing, but nobody has a perfect upbringing. What we have is a combination of punishment and reward, and that combination is unique to us. But of course, bear in mind that our parents also had a unique combination of punishment and reward. So I guess the kind of concept in psychology is this, it's, it's good enough. The schedule, the, 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 the balance between punishment and reward is good enough that you have a good enough upbringing so that you're able to function in society, you're able to do what it is you need to do, and you're not too distorted in the way that you do things. Now, of course, there are lots of mental health problems, there are lots of social problems, there are lots of other kinds of problems, and 
a behaviourist would say that those are due to the wrong balance of punishment and reward. And that's, that's a fair point in a way. But my ideas with active self-help is always this. We always have choice. But to, to be able to use choice, we have to understand the processes that create the choice. And we've got to understand how the choice works in our life. So, this is normality. But what about when it goes wrong? Well, in the legal system, there's kind of a strong kind of legal idea about responsibility. Now, the legal system basically is the outsourcing of justice. Let's call it the outsourcing of justice. I mean, it's, it's the legal system, so it's not quite that way. But in the legal system, there's a notion of responsibility. If you're not responsible for your actions, then you're, you're, you really shouldn't be punished. You should be helped or treated, let's say. And that's the, the basis of the, the, uh, the kind of the plea of insanity, I suppose. But it's a general principle. People who are very young are not considered to be adequately responsible for their actions. Uh, when I was teaching ethics, we used to call this the Gillick, Gillick competency. Are you competent enough to be able to make decisions, let's say, about your, your health care or other kinds of things? And there is some notional age, but of course it's individually determined uh, by experts, let's say. So... If you're, if you're young, you're not considered responsible enough through maturity to be able to make decisions about your own well-being. Likewise, if you have an extraordinarily low IQ or a serious mental health problem, you may be considered not able to do, make uh, kind of decisions about your own well-being, in which case someone else would be responsible for you. So you are, you're responsible for your actions under the law unless you're deemed to be not responsible for your actions. So, okay. So far, so simple. But suppose you give away your responsibility. Are you still responsible? So suppose you say, I feel like I can't cope. I can't do it. Suppose you say, I feel helpless. Are you helpless? Well, it can feel like you're helpless, but are you helpless? Would you be considered to be helpless under the law in the sense that you're not responsible for yourself anymore? Because in a way, you're progressing down a path of of giving away your responsibility, of giving away your responsibility for your own well-being. Trouble is, that doesn't make you non-responsible. It just makes you feel like you're not responsible. So let's recap for a moment. Our upbringing is characterized to a very large degree by a combination of punishment and reward. And that shapes our relationship to the external world. It also shapes our relationship to the internal world, but more so to the external world. You are punished if you run out in front of traffic. You are rewarded for doing well in things like school or social interactions or being able to have a conversation or, or being friendly or being pro-social, being generous. So in that way, we're made into decent human beings. So responsibility is being responsible for yourself. In law, if you're not responsible for yourself, you shouldn't be punished. You should be helped. But responsibility is something that we can give away. So if you say, I feel helpless, then in a sense, you're giving away your sense of personal responsibility. Now, if you say, I feel helpless, you're not actually helpless. And in, under the law, you wouldn't be considered to be helpless because you just feel helpless. But the whole social conditioning process over many, many years can make you feel physiologically, emotionally, and even cognitively helpless. So in a sense, you're giving away your ability to be responsible for yourself. Now, if you say, I feel helpless, is that a punishment or is it a reward? Because bear in mind, things which are punished happen less and things which are rewarded happen more. So I feel helpless. I feel I can't do it. I feel like I can't cope. Uh, I don't, I feel like I can't understand. I feel like I can't achieve things. Is this a punishment or is this a reward? Well, I would say actually it's a reward. Now that's going to be strange to a lot of people, okay? I feel helpless, why is that a reward? Because we typically anticipate, well, we typically expect our emotions to be accurate. We always think that what we feel is true. And all mental health problems have a huge element of I feel therefore it must be true even though it's not true so when you start to go down the path of giving away your responsibility you you reduce the effect of the external world upon your conditioning so sorry 
So you reduce the effect of the external world to such an extent that, that you're more determined, your behavior is more determined by your internal reality rather than your external reality. So when you say, I feel helpless, you feel helpless and it feels true. And therefore that feels like an accurate thing and it's, it's, it's a reward in a sense because your feelings are always true. So it's a correct interpretation. It feels like a correct interpretation. And that's why when you start to take the path of giving away your responsibility, you start to do it more and more and more. And that's why depression creeps into your life. Now, I've sort of reverse engineered three of the most common characteristics of chronic depression. Helplessness, hopelessness, and passivity. And you can recognize that if you feel helpless from being depressed for a period of time, you have traveled the path of becoming more and more helpless because you have traveled the path of giving away your responsibility, your feeling of responsibility for yourself. And that tells us that it's been rewarded because things which are rewarded you get more of and things which are punished you get less of. So I, I feel like I can't do it. That feels true. And therefore that feels like it's a reward in a sense. So I'm going to get more of that experience. But the truth is, feeling like you're, you're helpless, feeling like you can't do it, feeling like you can't cope, actually isn't true. So you're rewarding yourself, and I say reward, I don't mean it is a reward, it's, it's actually uh, taking a path that's completely unhelpful to you. But when I say reward, I mean the behavior is more likely to occur because it's activating the reward system. When you take the path towards depression, you're actually shaping your behavior in a completely unhelpful way. and. And because it's unhelpful, it continues to reinforce the idea that you can't do it, you're helpless, that there's no hope, that nothing can change. What's the point in trying? All of these are the characteristics of chronic depression. Uh, are rewarded because it, it rewards the feeling, but the feelings are accurate. It doesn't reflect reality. And if you were to go in front of a court and say, I feel helpless, yeah, but you're not helpless. You have a perfectly good IQ. You don't have a a mental health problem that breaks you from reality therefore the judge would say well you're not helpless you are responsible for yourself therefore you can take responsibility for yourself if you don't take responsibility for yourself it's not it's not something which actually needs to happen it's just something that you have progressed towards and that's not very helpful so I hope you find this interesting I know it's complex but then it's all below the surface of consciousness, and that's what makes it complicated. It's, it's sort of psychologically, it's not that complex, but it, it does feel complex because it's, it's hypothetical because I can't see it, I can't touch it. I can't, you know, I can't grasp it. It's just Dave Purvis saying it, but it's still accurate and correct. But the thing is, you see, it gives you an opportunity to think about things a bit differently and therefore to take some, take back well, actually, I'm going to change that. It gives you the opportunity to think about things differently and to keep your responsibility instead of giving it away. No one can take your sense of responsibility from you, but you can give it away. And if you give it away, you don't have it. And that's the problem with depression. We do less and less and less. We recede from external reality. We spend more time in internal reality uh, and we, we reinforce the wrong things. We give up power and our emotional power and control really but our sense of responsibility we give it away to things uh, which is completely unhelpful and the truth of it is you've got to reverse that path because there's just no benefit to going down the path of depression uh, I mean it's just pointless by the time you see this video I will have got a half a million views on my YouTube channel which in YouTube terms is actually very few but it seems like a lot to me because, you know, the people who watch my videos are a particular niche audience in a sense. They're people interested in learning how to have a better experience, to have a better life and to take control of their mental health as opposed to outsourcing their mental health.